General, the regular town council of February 20th to order. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungar. Here. Councillor Arnoni. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisotti. Here. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. Here. There's 11 members present that are absent. Pledge of, uh, pledge of, uh, excuse me, prayer, Councillor Falk. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you on behalf of all who have gathered here today <clears throat> for your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health. We need to fulfill our callings for sustenance and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in a useful work and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thanks as well for the freedom to embrace you. Thank you for your loving us and for your boundless and gracious nature. In the scriptures, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities, since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, I pray that our mayor, for the various levels of city officials, and in particular, for this assembled council, I'm asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of our times, a sense of welfare and true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and rightness, confidence in what we do is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even though there are honest disagreements, personal peace in their lives and joy in their tasks. We pray for the agenda set forth today. Please give us insurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved town of Enfield. In your most blessed name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, fire Item number four, fire evacuation announcement. We have the doors in the back of the hall. Please orderly go either left or right to the back doors or go to our left, your right out the doors to the first left. Go down the stairs, go around this, the bottom of the stairs and go straight out the doors in case of a fire or emergency. Item number five, minutes of the preceding meetings. Regular meeting, February 5th, 2018. So moved. Motion by uh, Councilor Arnone, second by Councilor Denny. End of discussion on the minutes. Hearing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. Nine in favor, two abstentions. Do I have a motion to approve special meeting February 5th, 2018? By Councilor Muller. Seconded by Councilor Crisati. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions. Nine in favor, two abstentions. Item number six is special guest, and we have tonight Michael, I'm going to ruin your last name, Cirillo, the Director of uh, Development Service. We're here to talk about the tax, the TIF. Welcome, Mike. Would Thank you say uh, Donna, Donna's working on the... So you can see it here? No, she's working on it. Oh. We're going to get this done. We're going to get this right about two years from now. <laughs> there it is. So, uh, first shot. Okay. We're just waiting for it to show up yep. over here. So, thank you for having me. Welcome. Here tonight. Appreciate it. I th think so. Is so that better? Right. Now you're Name and, right. uh, you know, uh, right. record. Thank Name you. Address. Mike Cirillo, 9 Ganny Terrace, Enfield, Connecticut, 06082 I remember it. <laughs> um, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, I'd like to give you a brief overview of tax increment financing. Um, it's, a, it's an item in a toolbox that we have for economic development. Um, it's a powerful economic development tool. Um, it's used across the United States. It's been used in, in, it's been employed as an economic development tool for several decades now um, with um, success. 
uh, in helping communities that are realizing some redevelopment efforts to build that momentum and expand it in the areas that they, they use the tax increment financing districts. Um, it does not increase taxpayer burden, and you can only use it in an area that does not exceed or in a, the districts itself cannot exceed 10% of the total um, tax values in town. So how does it work? Um, you have to define the area that you would like to use the TIF district, uh, where you'd like to use the TIF funding. Um, you need to establish what the original assessed value is for properties inside that district. So you draw a line in the sand, essentially. You'll see that in a second. I've got a little graph that helps to illustrate that a little bit better. Um, as the district in, improves, the assessed values increase. In the TIF district itself, it's the area in red that you see in the graph there. Um, that is what funds the TIF. Um, so the band across the bottom is your established tax, which you're, which you're collecting. That's what I referred to earlier as the original assessed value. Right? So we establish with the original assessed value, and anything that increases, anything that grows above that, that, that's funds that are then used to finance projects that go into that district. And the important part here is that the TIF funds are used to fund projects. So the town general fund is not affected by TIF districts. Um, the money that's coming in, the revenue that's coming in from that district um, continues to come in, and it continues to pay for uh, services that the town provides townwide, including in the district. The increment funded part, so that's that gray area that was, or the red area that was in that graph I showed, those funds are used to fund projects in the TIF district specifically. Now, you can set it up, the TIF district can be set up to use 100% of the money of that increment that's realized, or 50%, or 60%, whatever we decide as a, as a council, as a, as a community, what the percentage of the increment we're gonna use. We'll decide that in advance of actually approving a TIF district. So, for oversight, spending is subject to the same rules and processes that any other budget or spending decision is made um, by you all. So it needs to receive the approval and go through a process like any other spending decision. So some of the components of this include a policy. The policy is a general policy for the town, how the town goes through the process of determining which districts to establish what the process is for establishing those districts. It establishes an oversight board or commission um, to oversee the, um, uh, the, the running of the TIF district. And you cannot have a TIF district without a master plan. And the master plan is more or less the blueprint that the town uses for that district. It says these are the, these are the finite, these are the discrete items that we're gonna spend money on and it uses those funds for those projects specifically. You can also have a little bit of leverage in there depending on the arrangement that you have. You have the freedom to work out deals with a developer, for example, where there's, a, there's this notion of um, but for. So if a developer, say the mall, were to come in and want to develop the whole site, and we, our vision, which is based on the plan of conservation and development, says that we want something that's far more dense than is there currently. So we want to increase the return on investment for money the town has already invested in that area. By doing that, or by asking a developer to have a higher density project, he might be required to have, let's say, structured parking. Structured parking is not cheap. But that's what, would, that's what he needs in order to make the project feasible for him. The TIF can establish funding to build the structured parking portion of the project. So if it weren't for the TIF, the project would not happen. That's the but for part of um, the guideline that establishes how and when to use a TIF uh, funding. That's a pretty brief overview of TIF. Um, if you have questions, I'm here to answer them, and I'm guessing you have more questions. <laughs> 
Councilman Bosco and Councilman Arnold. On the, the thing you brought up about the square. So right now the, the mall or square or whatever you want to call it yep. is um, at a lower level. Correct. Right now in taxes because it's depressed. So if we put this TIF on and someone comes and uh, says they're going to do something to the mall that's going to double the revenue coming in, right. then that, if we said we were going to put 100%, we, the town itself wouldn't see no benefit to the extra 100% of taxes that came in other than to do projects in that TIF area, correct? Is that what you're saying? If you establish it to be 100% of the TIF funding, that goes the increment funding, yes, it would stay in the TIF district. Um, but you can, uh, it wouldn't impact the fire districts, for example, because those are separate, right? Those are separate funding mechanism. And the money that you have that's coming in is established, that baseline, the original assessed value. So you continue to um, bring money in. But it, it's a good description of how a TIF works, though, the one you made. The increase in value, that incremental increase in value over that base assessed value is money that would be used to then make improvements. At the end of the TIF period, because they don't go on forever, they have a, they have a shelf life um, that expires. At that point, all that additional revenue is town-wide. But you can decide in advance, in, in let's say the TIF district is the mall site, that 80% um, of it would be used um, to fund projects. The master plan is important because it says, here's the vision, the long-range vision for that site. And the long-range vision, you can see in the plan of conservation and development, it lays it out pretty well. Um, and it's similar to what we, what we submitted to Amazon. Um, but that requires infrastructure improvements that the town otherwise, you know, would have to find other sources of funding for, say roads, um, public amenities, streetscape improvements, uh, parking lots, parking structures, exactly. So it's not unwise to reinvest in that area because in the long term, it, it has a positive impact on the overall health of the community. And it, it would facilitate development that otherwise wouldn't happen. So you really think about it as, as taking what could be um, a, moderate, a moderately sized project that has a, you know, a, a medium return on investment for the town in the long term, and you're growing that return on investment exponentially, really, because you're, in, you're, you're a partner in it, if you will. So let's say for argument's sake, we say 100 percent. 100 percent of what, what's, uh, what we get above and over goes to the TIF. So are you saying that we could make and carve out exceptions at before we do this, like 80% mm -hmm. of yeah. the, you know, we're only going to use 20% of the money from the mall or, or the square for well, the TIF? Or right. are we stuck forever or till the thing expires right. to take that whole money and put it back into that area? And, and I guess what I'm trying to get across is, we really need to do something down here, oh, yeah. maybe Hazardville, sure. to, to try to get some of the it going. But what I would be yeah. afraid of is, a perfect example, the mall, that you know we are not getting the revenue that we should be getting because it went down in value. So what I would be afraid of is, you know, let's say we're going to say, okay, yeah, we're going to use this money from the TIF to do what we got to do, but the mall now comes in and triples in value. Mm -hmm. I, I would hate to see the rest of the town suffer. My district not get something done or, you know, ha not be able to use them funds. So sure. as long as we can move them within the perimeter and we, we could pick out certain parcels, I think it's a great thing. But right. that, and that's, that's the only thing I'm worried about with the TIF. And just to be clear, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pick out um, parcels. What you would do is Areas. you have the district itself, right? You establish the district. Then what you would do is you would say you're either going to use 100% of the increment that the increment value for projects within that district, or you're going to use less than 100%. And we can do multiple districts, as long as the total sum of the districts doesn't exceed 10% of the total value of property in the town. Okay, thank you. All set. All set. No, all set. Councilor, no. All right, so. 
I'm going to pick up where Joe was, and I honestly think the mall is a bad example for a TIF district um, because of its value already. The mall is devalued because of, in my opinion, the management of the mall and how they separated all their properties out. Someday, that mall will still be worth, right. like you just said, maybe triple its amount. Right. So for, for me, TIF isn't where I would use this. And we all know where we would use it, and it's the train station. And in that area, sure. um, uh, New Britain, mm -hmm. Suffield has a TIF, TIF district. Windsor Locks. Windsor Locks actually was able to, uh, was one of the factors of the company Beacon coming in to buy the Montgomery building. That's right. Um, that was a huge, huge tool in That's the right. toolbox to get that project off and going. Man, you go across that bridge right now, it's it's amazing uh, yeah. what they're doing to that. Uh, Already started? Oh, there's yeah. excavators in there. They're, they're tearing apart the inside. It's it's amazing. And, and really, to me, this was a catalyst of it. It is. And so that, that's my question. Yeah. Where are we? How far behind? And how can we get this thing launched? Well, there's a number of steps that we have to go through. Um, we have to first approve the policy. That guides and helps us to have a roadmap of how we move forward. We've been working for quite a while on the policy. It's been reviewed by um, an expert, um, and he's given me some comments. So I need to integrate those comments into the policy. It then goes to the town uh, manager, who then sends it to the town attorney for a review. At the same time, the Economic Development Commission has been working on establishing, looking at what could be potential TIF districts. Um, and. Um, originally, our original thinking was that the, that origin, our, our first TIF district would go from the mall to the river. Um, but in discussions with the um, with the expert on this subject, he recommended not doing the square site. That it was too big for it was too much to bite off for us at this stage because they're complicated, and this is our first attempt at this. And so, um, his recommendation was to focus on. On, on Thompsonville, and one of the reasons, and this is this is, an, this is a good reason. It's a very good reason, is that in order to fund, remember that in order to fund the TIF district, you have to have properties that are increasing in value, and there are a number of projects that are underway or are about to break ground in Thompsonville that will increase property values that will help to fund that um, that that fund, and when I say increase property values. Um, to be clear, I mean that property, not all the properties. So people around it aren't necessarily going to see an increase in their property values immediately, but over time they will, and that increase is what helps to fund it. Um, so the money would be used. Now, it's also important to understand that any of those improvements that happen in there, we've got several of them. Uh, um, we want to try to get this in place before the are they are reevaluated <laughs> so um, so that we capture a little bit of that it won't be you know I, the analysis will have to be helped we'll have to do the analysis with the finance director um, to take a look at what is the captured assessed value that's a another factor that goes into this but there are three steps at this point one is to adopt the policy two is to decide on what area we're going to choose to kick this off, um, and then the third decision would be to establish what the policies for this particular di district will be, the percentage of money that would go towards it if it's 100 percent or less, uh, and establish a commission to oversee it. Whew. Sounds like a long time. Is it going to be in, in my two years? <laughs> I hope it's in my two years. And, and, you know, that's, again, up to us, too. So you know, I, I hope we do more research on it. I have a, a, the whole complete um, uh, uh, state statue on it. Also, I can email out to you, and it, and it describes in detail um, a little more. Maybe you can There's a good, good night reading. summary. I'll send it to the town manager, and he can forward it on to you. It's you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really it's quite good, um, and it, it breaks it down in basic facts. It, it's going to have to go through, the steps are going to be, as I described, it'll have to be the district area will have to be approved by, or not approved by, but a recommendation will have to be made by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So that's another step that will go into it. There'll have to be a public hearing 
um, and then we'll have to evaluate and establish some of the projects. But I think starting small is a good idea, and we can use the money for things like police safety on the streets, by the way. It can be used for things like that. So it can offset some of the other costs that we have. It can also be used to help fund incentives for people to buy and re renovate housing. So there's a number of ways. We don't have to necessarily build things with it, but it's flexible. It, it brings the builders here too, so, you know, exactly. especially in an area where it's all transit oriented, the whole yeah, project yeah, no, was. I mean, that, really that was the incubator for it. That was one of the reasons. Um, that's why, it, to me, that's where it should be. Right now, is right around our a future station, which I, I know so many people are a little bummed out on. I don't know if you have any information on that, too, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, say it's not, it's not a lost deal by no, no means. No, not so at all. If you could, please. Uh, well, what we know is that, you know, the, is that the funding is on hold for right now, but that really the whole pro the whole train is being driven by the federal government it's not as much local although there are some local funds that would be used for the construction of the actual station the entire project is being driven by federal funding which is it doesn't appear to be at risk at all so really it's a question of time Actually, that federal funding is going to be released soon, too. That's correct. Uh, from the Trump administration, his plan. That's so correct. it should all come back again soon. That's right. And the, and, the, uh, uh, and the Federal Rail Administration, which has not otherwise been involved necessarily in this project, is looking for alternate routes for the Northeast Corridor. And their, their first choice would have been go, to go around Saybrook, uh, keep it where they are, but that's not working out very well for them. It's a lot of lawsuits that they're facing. So their alternate route um, is to come up through Hartford, through Enfield, to Springfield, and then over to Boston, which would be huge for us uh, because it would electrify the line. And what that means is that you can get on trains in Enfield and be in Manhattan without changing trains in New Haven. So it's direct service to Manhattan and Boston. And the Federal Rail Administration has approached the governor of Massachusetts and asked them to work with them directly. And it's been, there's been pressure put on the governor of Massachusetts to, to work with the, the feds on that project. So that's also incredibly promising. Thank you very much. Councilor Denny. Yeah, I'm not sure. You might want to explain now if the if the property values go up, right. and we're going to use that property value to fund this. Yeah. What kind of an effect would that have on our uh, ability to pay for police and extra public works and et cetera and et cetera? Mm -hmm. I, I, is there an effect on that, or we're not taking all that money? No, we don't. We don't touch it. So if, let me go back real quickly to that slide and show you. So the area in gray, um, if you look across the bottom, this is the area gray across the bottom is revenue that we're receiving now. It's not taught. It cannot be touched. It cannot be used for anything but services that are, are you've already committed to. Um, it's only the part in red. It's only the incremental increase that you can use, which is why it's important to do these in places where you actually have economic activity. Um, because it, unless property, unless there are parcels that are improved, you've got nothing to fund your your TIF. So okay. it's that's a good question. No, no. yeah. No, no. So, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay, so I guess I kind of listened to what Joey was saying and kind of. So what would happen when you were going to decide that you're going to have a TIF? You would have the plan, and the plan would have in it a specific number of years. So that would be determined by how much growth that's expected within that development during that time. So it would have an end cap. So basically, you try to design the TIF such that the growth that you're going to see is going to pay for the infrastructure that you need to develop it. And once that happens, the TIF will be over and everything should be status quo. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. If you, if you were to use the TIF, if you were to use that to uh, purchase uh, bonds, for example, it would have to be repaid by money that you anticipate receiving in that TIF. Yep. It has okay. to be done. That's why the economic um, analysis board, the financial it's analysis, very important. very important. 
And also, I did catch the, the explanation of density down in Thompsonville, and I finally understand it. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> okay, great. Council Crisati. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mike, for, uh, for sharing this. Uh, we were in a meeting, and you discussed this yeah. with us, and uh, I, think it's, I think it's an excellent program that will, that will come into place here. Could you uh, maybe tell us the, the identified districts that, you know, when we're talking about the, the TIP districts, uh, especially down in T-ville that we're, that we're going to actually be targeting. I sure. you know that the, the rail way, maybe you could just give a little overview to everybody uh, about the River Gateway vision yeah, that, sure. that we have. Yeah, sure. Okay. So um, we, as, you, as you're aware, we received funding for a TOD study, Transit Oriented Development Study. And that established the geography that we're studying, right? And that area is approximately half a mile from the train, the location of the train station and a radius. Well, the properties don't work in complete circles, so it's a little choppy around the edges, but that generally is the area. And it covers, um, it, it extends, let's say, uh, from Enfield Street to the river and from just past Alden Avenue to not quite Franklin, so it's it covers that part of Tom, oh, Thompsonville, basically, as we know it. Um, so that's the geography of the TIF district, if we use it. It would be nice if they overlapped, actually, if the TOD study overlaps with the TIF district, which overlaps with any of the 17 other plans that we've already done in Thompsonville, so that this, the TIF is just it's building upon work we've already done as opposed to starting from scratch and reinventing the will. So it, that's what the kind of the beauty of the TIF district in Thompsonville, in addition to um, it being a, a critical need area for us and highly visible, um, is, is the fact that we're not reinventing the wheel there. We're, we're building on stuff. Um, some of the other places that make sense for TIFs are Hazardville. Um, uh, route 5 of the mass line. Um, TIFs sometimes are very helpful when you have um, areas that are going through um, economic shock. Um, so let's say you have a major corporate tenant that leaves your community and you're left with a lot of land. Um, that, can be, <laughs> that can be a good area for um, a TIF district um, because you can start to look at opportunities. But the key is, do you see anything on that horizon that represents an improvement by somebody? Let's say the hotel, for example, if it were to expand, that would represent an increase in tax value that could help fund to make that area attractive to, for somebody that wants to, say, purchase uh, a, a former corporate campus for somebody. So I think those are the three major districts um, because they, um, you know, they meet a lot of the criteria that um, that that are going to help the town economically. I mean, the town's already made investments um, in infrastructure and uh, in those areas. Uh, they're well established. They have fairly high density, um, and so um, they're well served by public infrastructure, as opposed to lower density areas that may not be. But I, I think that this all reinforces the the ability of the town to maximize its return on investment. Councilor Falk. Uh, that red zone looks pretty. Yeah. Uh, I'm a developer. Why would I go in there and build anything? What's the incentive? What do you need to build, sir? Maybe I don't need to build anything. Maybe well, you, you might not, but then he... how do you get me to come in and do it for you? Well, that's what's nice about the TIF vision, right? So it's a master plan. And in the Thompsonville area, we've got the study that we're doing that's going to show opportunities for investment by people like you. Um, but you may look at a project and say, you know, I just can't, I can't make that project work because I have to build parking for it. I need parking to be able to support the, the use that I have there. I want to put in a five-story building that wraps around. It's going to have office. It's going to have residential uses. But I don't have enough parking. And if I put the building in a vacant lot, that's even less parking because I'm taking a parking. So it doesn't work for me as a developer. Ah, so we say, well, we got a TIF uh, fund that we can use to build structure parking that's shared by your development and others. 
that makes it possible for you to do that. So we're sharing the expense of going there. And in addition, here's our vision for the rest of the neighborhood and how we're using these resources to uh, increase property values in the neighborhood as a whole to make it commercially more viable for you and others. You also put uh, sewers in the street and electrical lines and all that utilities. Well, one of the good things about some of these TIF districts that we're looking at is that we've already got those investments. We've already made those investments as a community. We've already paid for infrastructure in these places. So, you know, when it comes to return on investment, we should be maximizing the use of those lands. We've already paid for infrastructure there. Why not maximize it? So if we needed to increase the uh, sewer capacity or water lines or bury the power lines, um, we could use TIF district um, financing for that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Mike, one quick question. Mm -hmm. when you, so if you did a TIF district in Thompsonville, is there possible that residential properties could be part of that TIF district? Oh, absolutely. And so, mm -hmm. so what if you're, just say you own a house, right? And right. You're happy where you are, whatever you're paying in your sure. taxes, and you don't want to actually now get an assessed value that's higher than what you're, uh -huh. you're paying. What does that resident do? Uh, that's tricky. I mean, because the truth is that the objective here is for is for property values to go up. Right. And you know that's a reality of gentrification. Right. No, I just. Yeah, I mean. You no, know, but it's the yeah. truth. It's it's it is it's a it's a it's a byproduct. It's a you know the law of unintended consequences. Right. But the same thing. Let's say for example, the train comes or. I don't know, for whatever reason, we run out of gas. And so everyone needs to move to Thompsonville because they can walk everywhere. Property values are going to go up anyway. Right. So Im improving property values ha is a double-edged sword. Agree. No, and I agree. It really that's, is. Yeah. That's, heard, that's some of the concerns I heard about it. it but that's a, And it's important to address it because it's true. Right. Right. Yeah. No, it's, and so, it's true. So, and so... Assuming if a resident wanted to challenge it, they could go to our Board of Assessment Appeals if they wanted to, at least initially. If they wanted to, right. sure, yeah. I believe so, so. I don't know the rules for it, but yeah. And so is the TIF just from an economic development standpoint, is it more of the town's, again, enticing investment into a certain area? Or can a, an organization, for example, say, again, so, say something's going on in the marketplace, whatever it may be. Sure. And someone says, hey, look, I've been scouting out. you got a great location. Yeah. Can a business kind of ask the town to create a TIF in a, in a certain area that maybe we hadn't considered prior? Or is it town, you know, who generates the TIF? It depends on your policy. Um, somebody, a private sector person could come in with the record, you know, and say, look, I would like to develop this area. Right. Um, as I think as long as it meets the goals and objectives um, as they're articulated in the plan of conservation and development, Sure, you could. I mean, there's nothing that prevents the private sector from making uh, that request. Um, but that's where the TIF policy comes through, so they'd have to go through that process. And, and so the policy is when do you expect to have a policy, I'm assuming, before us at some point? Yes. Um, or is once this going it's, to general, general governance? It's going to the counselor, and then from there we can um, take it to you. Estimated time? Just curious. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? Joking. <laughs> Just see if you're paying attention. That's usually what you expect. No, we've been with preliminary comments, <laughs> and he's implemented them. So when we get it back, uh, it, it, our review isn't going to be that. It's already been written. We've already gotten the policy that from Southfield Windsor Locks. Talked to the same attorney who's done it, the expert. So it's really a matter of just improvising. The biggest thing you talk about is finding out where you want to do your districts and do we want right. you know, what the policy is going to be about the reimbursement. So our review will be very quick turnaround. Do we do we have any st statistics r regionally or locally that so if some, like Suffield established a TIF, did they have an est how much property value grew in that TIF? Do we have like general area around? Do we have any of that? They're still too new. I too mean, new? Suffield's is pretty new, um, but their their district goes from Suffield Village to the um, lumber mill down, it covers quite a large area, but it's it. their downtown. Um, they, they implemented it after the CVS was put in place, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. 
because uh, that would have helped them to realize a lot of funds. But they've gotten some other new developments that are starting to break ground there that will help them. Okay. Their focus is, and they want their TIF um, to help redevelop the lumber yard that's there, which is behind where the CVS is. So that's their primary objective is the lumber yard, the redevelopment of the lumber yard. But the policy is fairly boilerplate. I mean, it's right. pretty standard. It, it's, you know, we have to follow it because it's, an, you know, it's their standards. Um, the, the more complicated part is the master plan, but we've been doing several years of work on that before I got here. Um, so the pieces are in place. Um, we'd have to call and, uh, you know, as I said, I think the analysis is the most, is the trickiest part. Mm -hmm. But the but the work that will be done or needs to be done will also be informed by the TOD study that we're working on, right? Because that's going to give us some recommendations of things that we need to do. And part of that TOD study is a real estate market analysis, which is looking at Mr. Developer, Mr. Developer Peter Falk, and saying, here's what you're gonna to need to do in order to attract these developers. Mm -hmm. So, and we can shop those parcels to developers in the form of an RFP right. to them right. to come back to us and we can say part of our economic development toolbox is this, this, and this. Right. Yep. So. Just I'll another comment, and, and that is, uh, you know, we've been talking about re revitalizing Thompsonville forever. And of yeah. course, there's a byproduct of that, and it's increased property values. And, and a yeah. primary example uh, I saw on my trip to, to Charlotte, <clears throat> this area was had been depressed forever, and somebody had this brainstorm they were going to go in and gradually increase it, kind of like Thompsonville. So they gradually fixed property by property, and it got to the point where the people that had been living there couldn't afford to live there anymore because the property values went up. It's a, it's, it's a byproduct. You, right. you can't get away from it. You want to revitalize it? Yep. It's going to happen. But they did take into account uh, housing for the, uh, those people. They created uh, mixed-use apartment buildings uh, like condos and upper yeah. uh, full full price rentals and uh, uh, low price rentals, all yeah. in incorporated within the one unit, similar to Bigelow, actually. But, yeah. but it works. Yeah. It's excellent. So the last thing is part of the TIF, so for like multifamilies, mm -hmm. could you mandate or part of the TIF that someone has to own or occupy? which generally means, you know, the, the property will may, be maintained. That's a good question. I don't, I don't think that's part of the TIF. I think that's, that can be established. Okay. Say, for example, if we do an incentives program. Right, that's what I was thinking. For incentive, housing right. rehab, it would be part of those agreements. So kind of as a byproduct. Okay. But I'd have to check with Chris on that and see if that could be integrated into the policy. It may be. Okay. It may be. It, it certainly should be. I agree. That's, if we're doing incentives for right. housing you rehab. You want to keep, yeah, exactly. Sure. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Councillor Scott. Can you just send us that um, your presentation via email? Yes, Thank I will. You. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks everyone. Very informative. Just got it. Just got it. Yeah, just now. A little while just ago. Now. Beginning of the meeting. Okay. Uh, I have number seven: public communications and petitions. Do we have anyone like to speak for the council tonight? Ma'am. Kelly. Kelly Hemler, 10 Hartford Ave. Um, every year I do a fundraiser for Loaves and Fishes Soup Kitchen, and this year I'm going to do Red Robin. So I want to invite you all. It's going to be next Wednesday, which is February 28th from 5 to 8. If you come by and have dinner, um, the restaurant will donate 10%. Thank you very much. Thank you. February 28th. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak before the council? Gina. February 28th, five day. Good evening. I was here last year and that had to do with paving also. You have the paper that I have. Sir, your name and address for the record. Pardon? Name and address for the record, sir. Uh, James E. McCarthy at 10 Locks Lane in Enfield, Connecticut. Sorry about that. No, go right ahead. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to multitask. Apologize. 
Uh, Go ahead, sir. I'll see. So last year I was here having to do with the paving also, and that was the regulatory role as to, as to uh, the static role, and that had been resolved, I understand, with the town of Enfield. They no longer use the vibratory roller because of uh, the problems that are caused with the street condition. This year here, I have the information that I have in front of you there that, that uh, I made up. And my purpose for being here is to inform you of a costly discrepancy in the town paving program. First, I'm not just a person listening to complaint of discrepancy. I'm retired from the Metropolitan District with 35 years of experience as a senior construction inspector. I was the first person, to, I was the person who decided that all forms of construction that was done, concrete, steel, brickwork, paving, sewer lines, water mains, and other jobs, I don't think. For 10 of these years, I was a supervisor of the paving for the Metropolitan District. I wrote up the contracts. I was completely res responsible for everything in it, and I also did some of the inspection work. And at one time, during the 1980s, when the big sewer program was going on in the town of Enfield, they rented me from the Metropolitan District for three years to take over this paving program inspection for the town of Enfield on it. So I worked there for three years at that particular time, I uh, think. Uh, my complaint is the town of Enfield is spending thousands of dollars unnecessarily on lawn restoration. The contractors are replacing up to eight feet of undisturbed soil in the back of the berm after the paving is completed. The only area to be replaced is a small area in back of the berm that has been disturbed. Nothing else should have to be replaced on any project whatsoever, often no more than 12 inches. Enfield replaces eight feet all the way back to the end of the property line for no reason whatsoever, just to waste your time, your money. It should never be done. It's completely wrong, and I have more experience than the people that you have in the town of Enfield that are doing the work. I'm calling on you to town of Enfield to bring that to a halt. This money that is being spent unnecessarily on lawn re restoration that could be applied to Petunia's concrete paving. It's too late to correct the problems that have been completed, but now is the time to bring it to a halt. The payment for restoration should be included in the cost of the loan. In other words, whatever you bid for a cubic yard of loam, that part you put inside there, your cost of putting the loam down, putting the fertilizer down, putting the fertilizer, the everything that has to do with the restoration, rolling and grading and everything. That, and that's how you control your costs as a contractor to determine how that's done. So uh, the other bad thing is that eight feet back, that's the property pin. Mine is gone. I used it many years ago when my neighbor was putting up a chain lean fence, and I uncovered my property pin at the northeast corner at the back of my lot, and the pin at the southeast corner, which is the front of my lot, and I put a string in between so that the fence could be put up six inches off the line. So I've used it. I know it's there, but now it's gone. It's, it's, when they go back eight feet, they take out everything. Property pins are gone all over the town of Enfield. Hundreds, probably thousands of them. I don't know. But every single one, they just dug up. After they completed their work, I went out and I said, well, I'm going to go look for my property pin. I know exactly where it is. I took an area this big where the pin's supposed to be in the middle. No property pin. It's gone. And there were thousands of them that are gone. What are you going to do about it? You try to keep the people, you want them to keep their property pins. It's how you control where the edge of the property is. Uh, what's going to be done about that? Uh, my property pin is gone. I, fortunately, I have the ability to put my pin back in. I'm a little better off than some people, so. So also, in the material that is loam that is used in my area, and I'm sure if it's in my area, as many other areas on the thing, it's saturated with small stones. I couldn't believe it. I pointed this out to the inspector on the job. I said, that is completely unacceptable. They're bidding on a job to put loam back in, which should be equal to what was there or better. When you put in loam, no contractor ever put loam in on any job I was ever on that had stones in it. If it was there, it went, and if we, there, was, there was no discussion, it's over with. I will not accept it. And that should not have been expect, accepted. Unfortunately, it has. But if you ever want to see what it's like, 
Come down to my house during the summertime. I'll be glad to dig up a shovel full and amaze you to what was used for loam that, should, that is completely unacceptable. So consequently, my main purpose to be here then is to have the contractors stop going all the way back to the property line unnecessarily. And if they could go 12 inches instead of eight feet, imagine the money that is being saved by the town of Enfield to replace 12 inches as opposed to eight feet. And a good contractor should, I mean, a good inspector should be there. When a berm is put 20 in- 20 seconds, sir, sorry. Pardon? 20 seconds. Go. Yeah. You have 20 seconds. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. Yeah. So. You still have time. Sorry, I just wanted to, didn't want to beep on you. You can come back a second time. Yep. Thank you. Gene, I apologize. That's okay. Yep. Gina Sullivan, 11 Spear Avenue. Good evening. Um, I'm here tonight to just see if there's any status or any information on the um, air quality issues at Barnard School. Um, I have a lot of friends who have student, who have children that attend, um, and there's a lot of complaints about headaches and, and a lot of issues going on. And I, I believe there was an air quality test done, but has there ever been a, a test, an allergy test or, or anything done? Um, for this building, um, it seems like it's a it's a pretty serious issue, um, and also s the other buildings as well. Um, you know, what's the status of what's going on with um, the air quality at these buildings? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. I'm here to uh, talk about the defeated referendum of $90, $95 million. And I know that the strategy is to bring that back again, try and do something. I'm a little tired of having the voters lose their say. You have a referendum. They vote. Definitely, they don't want it. And yet, there's a next strategy, which has happened in the past. So if you keep not listening to the voters, uh, I don't know where that leaves you, but it leaves me cold. Um, you know, when you originally talked about this process, you talked about 15 to 17 million, and it inflates up to 95 million. You think that the, you're blaming yourselves for not educating the the public enough on the vote, but actually you over-educated them very well and they knew exactly what they were voting down. And uh, when, you, when you're looking at the, the, the line items in that budget, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm glad it's got voted down and I hope that you don't intend to come back with another one because I'll do whatever I can to keep people from voting for it again. Um, the school budget's autonomous. We keep giving them more and more money every year, even though the buildings are closed and the population is down in the schools. But yet, because of a stupid law in the state that says that we have to fund at least as much as we did last year, and nobody challenges it. There is a challenge. There is a formula that you can use to prove that your costs should have gone down by closing the schools and that the population is down so you can challenge that formula. Now, it's pretty obvious that, you know, there were people uh, soliciting to, to get that formula instituted in the first place, teachers' unions and so forth. Um, so unless we have somebody that's willing to stand up and challenge that, we're, we're just being taxed for no reason. The building maintenance and boilers, the schedules of the maintenance, I know that we were heavily lacking in those things when we did the citizens audit. I'm wondering if they ever instituted that. We gave them lists of things to do, challenges to, to, to step up to, and I haven't heard anybody say, you know, like the steam valves. The steam valves, they, they had the heat on at Enfield High, and this is back, what, five, six years ago, and they had the windows open. And I asked about it. I stopped in, I said, 
it's the winter time, it's a cold day, why are the windows off? Oh, we can't turn the heat off. Well, it turns out in our audit, they have steam valves that had never been maintained. So there's a problem. Is, are they still there and is anybody maintaining them? Maybe they're still in some other schools. I'm, I don't care whether they're or not. I'm just saying somebody needs to step up and have a schedule and have a maintenance uh, uh, agreement on what we're actually going to do. Uh, I'm just going over things in the past. MSDS sheets. We couldn't get a few years ago, we couldn't get people to admit who was responsible to check MSDS sheets. Consequently, we had lead in the ovens at the at Fermi, and then on top of that, six months later, after we get a new oven, which we didn't need, all we needed to do was rebrick it with fire brick, but we get a whole new oven, right? And then they had the lead come in in the clear glazing, and that was months after they let the MSDS sheets go by in the last one. Um, and then. I don't know who we listen to about boilers when, we, when they say we need boilers. Are we listening to salespeople? Are we listening to our engineers or engineers that we hire that tell us boilers are not the problem, it's the controls? Boilers are as old as the hills. They're vessels that heat, and all you have to do is have modern equipment. Sorry. Um, 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, I listened to this TIF guy. We're talking about higher taxes. That's what that comes down to. It looks like, uh, you know, are there any examples of successes? Or are we going to just jump on another bandwagon that is going to blow up in our face? So it sounds like it's an experiment to me. And uh, nothing's for free. And if you put a, a thing in down there and then you've already got people strapped for taxes and then they're going to go on, Time's up, Jack. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good evening, Mary Ann Turner, 7 Meadow Road. You all look like you got your photo done this evening. Um, just touching on a couple of things that may have been brought up this evening. Um, the TIF thing actually sounds like a pretty good idea that Enfield might want to take advantage of, as uh, Councilor Arnone was elaborating on. What's going on in Windsor Locks is actually uh, long overdue uh, for some of the issues they've had there. And Enfield has a great opportunity for us to put that into play here. And as for taxes, when you think about it, if the values of the property rise, that maybe the, the great part will be that the fire department taxes will lower. So, because then there'll be a balance. Because that would just seem like an opportunity. I can't see why they could stay at the height that they are, but we all know that that's not a town issue, that is a local fire district issue. So there may be some balance there. And what it'll do is it gives Enfield an opportunity to become that um, place to be self-sufficient and, you know, have us move forward instead of just standing still. So some of those items that were discussed earlier are actually quite uh, are good ideas, and you've got some people here today that in the town working here that can help guide you and move us forward. So I think it's a great idea. As for the JFK um, coming back for another look-see, I think from what I understand, it's going through the uh, one of the other committees, it's not going to be like it was the last time. And the reason that it may have failed was that the price tag might have been very high and it didn't take into consideration that to some of the things that you're going to change. And bottom line is, it's to your benefit, to it's the town's benefit for our JFK to be another uh, diamond in our uh, collective units of schools. It's an opportunity. So if you and when you move forward with the um, referendum for the schools, Really and truly, the last referendum may have lost, but it didn't really lose by much. It means that the public, and for my opinion, is we're open to opportunities and to keep our town at the level that we will be looked at as, a, as the one community to, to come to. We all run into things in town where things are surprises, like you know different businesses closing, but as we all learned through the Hallmark process, they closed, something else came. 
So I would just like as some of the stuff that got mentioned earlier this evening are um, opportunities. And I think this council actually has shown themselves, all of you, to be people who take advantage and look forward to grasping those opportunities and move and feel forward. So keep it up. We'll keep, uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak for the council? Bob. <clears throat> Bob T. Katz, Woodgate Circle. I do want to mention about this hospital or care center up in uh, Springfield that's closing at the end of March. The last patient left yesterday. However, they got about 60 mental patients. Uh, people with mental issues that they can't find a place for. So the only alternative is to release them to the streets. So they, you may have a population coming to Enfield and you don't realize. As far as the TIF program, Windsor Locks and Suffield is, is scheduled to grow anyways, according to the data center at UConn. Enfield's going to decline 10.5%. That means your school population is going to decline 10.5%. But as far as a developer, why would a developer move to Enfield? The quality of the elementary schools, they have done tests. They won't release the results of the air quality in the schools. I don't know where they are. People want to know, why, why would you want to have your children here in Enfield if we don't know that the schools are safe? If you could look at Shelton, Connecticut, Shelton, Connecticut, their mill rate is 22. So why would someone want to move to Enfield when the mill rate in Shelton is 22? Towns like Ansonia and Derby are talking to each other about consolidating the school districts. Maybe we should look at that to reduce our costs. Other towns are doing it. They're taking the initiative. I don't see any initiative here to reduce our cost, to make things better, Th for people want to, uh, developers that want to come here and have their family and children here because the schools are in disrepair, the six elementary schools, actually JFK is in the best shape and we're concentrating on that and wasting our money when we need to fix. The roof collapse there's, is leaking at Parkman. We don't know the condition of the other roofs. What's our public works department doing? The boilers are blowing up. I talked to a boiler manufacturer who I know personally out in the Midwest. He says, you shouldn't be replacing boilers. They should last 100 years. You're replacing boilers at Crandall's that's only 12 years old. This, this is ridiculous that we're, we're spending this money that quickly when everything is deteriorating What's our public works department doing? Maybe we need a new public works director to get these repairs done correctly. Some of the gigs that were grass needs to be planted in certain areas, they should be fixing the fields at JFK, the public works department. We shouldn't have a contractor come in and do that. So that's basically what I'm saying. If you're going to have the town grow, you got to change what's going on. And I went to that meeting and I was very disappointed the facility meeting on what's going on it doesn't seem like there's a lot of progress going so if we want to move ahead we got to make some changes in the town thank you would anyone else like to speak for the council for the second time Jack I must have been talking slower on the last one. Jack Sheridan, 70 though. Cannon Road. A um, few other things that I skipped over here. One was uh, require, uh, inquiring about the pothole machine that we bought last year. It's supposed to heat. I haven't seen them use that at all. We have some gigantic potholes going through Powder Hollow and over that way, Abbey Road. Um, I'd like to know what the status is. And the truck wash, what's the status of that? And maybe in lieu of the truck wash, we should be leasing our trucks. Um, 
And I'd like to know who has the numbers on the pollution at the JFK, because I'm checking on the numbers in surrounding towns, and there we're well within their numbers that are acceptable, and yet they're not acceptable in Enfield. Um, and also, as a quick summary, Hillary didn't lose by much either. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Anyone else like? There's one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. My name's Gemma Beebe. I live at 6 B Martin Street, and I was in the locker room at JFK getting my lockers, and there was a gas leak in there, and everyone was like complaining about the gas leak. So I think that should get looked at, and. When I, I'm in Blue House, and the girls' bathroom has mold growing out of the wall. And I think that should get looked at, too. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any, anyone else like to speak for the council? Bob for the second time. You should be looking at the towns that are equal size of Enfield, not looking at a small town that's near us. Towns that are growing, Norwich, fantastic rate. You should look at what's going there. Manchester, growing at a fantastic rate. Southington, Wallingford, they got a library that's five times bigger than Enfield. We don't have enough capacity in the library to handle what the, the public needs. Middletown is growing. East Hartford is starting to grow. We're infield. We're going down. It's up to the council to make some changes on what's going on to get things done because we're going nowhere and TIF will not help. People do not want to use public transportation. The bus line from New Britain to Hartford is a failure. They're going to put tolls in to force us into public transportation, which is the worst thing that we could ever do. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Hearing none, I declare public communications closed. Move on to item eight, which is councilor communications. Councilor Bosco. Yeah, through the mayor to the town manager. I, I was talking, Ed actually called me the other day, and that was one of the sore subjects is I have not seen our pothole patcher out working. And uh, according to what Ed said, he's seen, seen them where they're putting <coughs> coal patch in a, a hole. And there's no reason whatsoever we should be using any coal patch. Just because either the employees or the directors or someone doesn't like it doesn't mean that they shouldn't be using something that we purchased. And the, the thing is with that pothole patcher, it, when, when you put a repair in, it's permanent. It doesn't blow out, so I don't know why we're throwing coal patch in a hole that we're only going to have to go back in the spring and redo when we have the machine. And then, you know, I, I heard the most craziest excuse that, that I heard from them is they weren't going to use the pothole patcher in the summer because there may be some stones on the ground and, and something will go around them. Well, we have no problem in the middle of the winter sticking a cone in the middle of the road because we don't get to it, to the pothole. So... There should be something we could do to warn the people, signs or something, loose stones on the road, so we fix them once and for all. So we spent all that money. I want to see it used. And I, what, what else I want to see is how much emulsion did we buy in stone last year, the year before, compared to what we're using this year? Because we shouldn't be off that much, and I don't feel we should be putting any... Uh, coal patch in and and you know the next thing is maybe we're looking to save money you know just like all the toner that they found maybe we shouldn't be buying any coal patch because we have the machine it's supposed to work in freezing weather it's supposed to work in the in the wet in all conditions why are we buying coal patch to throw it into the to the holes because we are wasting money you know it may take a little longer to fix the pat the, the hole with the uh pothole machine but it's permanent 
They're throwing coal patch. That's only good till the next rainstorm or, or next, next freeze. So I don't care if they don't like it. We purchased it. I want to see it run. And um, I don't, I don't want to hear no excuses. But I do want to hear why they're not using it. They can give me the excuse once. And uh, I want to know why it's not used and I want it used. And Ed, am I, am I wrong? I, is that how you feel? I mean, we... we, we I know Winding Lane has co had coal patch in it and the, and the holes are gone. And I know that Brainerd Road is a disaster beyond the police station all the way to Roof, uh, Hazard Avenue. I know that there's potholes everywhere. I don't see anybody out doing anything with the coal patch machine at all. And, and the next That's thing, why I called you. And the next thing that I, 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 I want to address is we have a problem in front of, uh, what number of Weymouth Road is that? 151. 151 Weymouth Road. There was water puddling up, and it needed to, they were, we were waiting for a whole bunch of projects to come to warm up the asphalt so we could pound it down so we could make a little path for the water to come and, and, running, and run into the drain. Well, that didn't happen. So we do have a local contractor that has a radiant machine, and maybe we can get him to come work hourly for us so we don't have to set up a whole day so we can fix the roads. Because sadly, if you have water sitting in a pothole and it freezes and unfreezes and freezes and unfreezes, that's where you start finding the checking and cracking. So we have a road, road that's relatively new with ponding water on it, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a patch that we're going to need to put in there, and we're going to be ruining the, the new roads. And thirdly, I was talking to Mike about it today. Um, we have emulsion in our, our pothole patcher. Can that pothole patcher be used somehow adapted with some kind of adapter so we could use... Um, the emulsion in the cracks. So now that it's cold out and them cracks are wider and we're not waiting for a whole big town-wide crack sealing, we can go out and seal some of the cracks. I was down on, uh, uh, what was it, Deborah Street, and where they had joined some of the streets, the, the, the crack is getting pretty wide, and that's a relatively new street. And if we don't address that crack, we're going to get water infiltration, and it's going to start popping our brand new road. So if we can use that emulsion to fix these roads where they are, I want to. And if not, I'd still like to get a price on how much it would cost for something so we can keep up on it. And the idea is we need to keep up on it. It's We can't just be sitting back, like Jack says, or looking at the problems that we have and not addressing them. So I, I'd like to know if we can get... A price on either adapting that or what it's going to take to do crack sealing. I'd like you to, to, to look into hiring a um, an hourly contractor. Like I said, there is one in town that has the infrared, so maybe he won't charge us for a whole day for a couple hours' work. And I want the, pat, the potholes pit, fixed correctly. I really don't care if someone likes the machine or not. That's their job, and they better do it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what up? Couch for Falk. <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Lori and I went to a uh, convention in Washington, uh, CADCA, which is the uh, <clears throat> Community Anti-Drug Coalition of America. And they had a whole series of, uh, of different training uh, programs that, that you had the opportunity of going to. And uh, the ones that I went to were basically on education, um, I think it's very important that we um, get some sort of a program in the uh, schools to, to educate young kids on, on the uh, problems associated with alcohol and marijuana and any of the, any of the other drugs that uh, happen to be available to them. Uh, if we can educate them at a young age, hopefully we would have a reduction at an older age and many of the, the problems that we're experiencing today with the opioid crisis will go down. I know that uh, there was another one I went to had to do with uh, marijuana, the fact that uh, a lot of states have it's legal, and people think, oh, there's no harm to this, it's legal, you know, and that's not correct. But the fact that it's, it's classified as a class one drug doesn't allow researchers to research it and prove 
that it's not a good drug and it has bad side effects. So I, when we went to Capitol Hill, I approached the Courtney and, and um, our senators about you know, change the class from one to two so we could test it and prove that it's bad or get rid of that requirement on class one drugs so that they can be tested and, and, and we can get the results to show people that these are bad drugs and we, we, we shouldn't have them out there. So anyway, that's my call. Thanks. Thank you. Council Angara. I wanted to quickly mention a few things that are coming up in town. Uh, I attended the first readers meeting and they have their annual ceremony on March 5th at 6 p.m. at Enfield High School. Also, the one fundraiser they have a year is their trivia contest. So they're looking for tables of 10 people to get together. So uh, that's going to be this Saturday night at Mount Carmel. And I have my team gathered and I'm hoping to take first place. So I'm hoping <laughs> there'll be some good competition there. I want to con congratulate the Enfield Police Department. They had their awards last month, and it was also nice to see that some of the civilians get recognized as well and their brave efforts. So congratulations to all the recipients. I also attended the Development Services meeting with Mike Cirillo, and it was good to hear all that information again about TIFF. Uh, like Peter mentioned, we went to CADCA convention a couple weeks ago. It's the Community Anti-Drug Coalition of America, and I brought back one of their posters, and they had this everywhere. So I'm hoping to put it up in town somewhere so we can partner against drugs. I wanted to thank the Youth Services for inviting me to go. This trip was held in Washington, D.C., and it was funded through a federal grant. I would especially like to thank Jean, Jean Hoy, Andrea Mashak and Tremaine Taylor. Um, they really do a bang up job at youth services over there. Um, also, uh, Kelly Fisher. Um, I wanted to say that this organization is a national leadership forum to discuss the opioid epidemic, the marijuana and other substance abuse challenges. There were over 3,000 community leaders that convened at this forum. We also went to Capitol Hill to discuss drug prevention with our Connecticut State Senators, Chris Murphy, Richard Blumenthal, and Representative Joe Courtney. We thanked them for their support, and they told us that through appropriations that there will be continued financial support on this war on drugs. We also attended classes on building a drug-free community. And so I look forward to working with Youth Services and the Enfield Together Coalition in trying to get some of these new ideas generated. I also brought back um, a bottle. I've never seen this before, but it has a combination security on the top of it. And I'm going to pass it around, and you can look at it. Just It's another little gimmick to help keep the drugs away from those that shouldn't have it and that the people that need it can have it. So I'll pass that. Hey, what's the combination? Pass that along. Don't, don't do one, two, three, four. <laughs> right. One, two, three, exactly. four. Uh, more people from over there. And I did want to mention that I learned at this convention that more people last year in 2017 died of overdose than all those that were killed in the Vietnam War. And I was just blown away by those numbers and that this problem is across the country. And there were people there from every state in the country. American Samoa, too. That's right. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much. Councilor Davis. First, I want to thank everybody that came up and spoke. Um, when you guys come and speak, that's how we get to know what's going on in town. Your voice is extremely important. Go down through a few. Oh, let's see. Gina, thank you for bringing up about Barner School. That was something I was uh, planning on asking tonight. And then, um, Jack, thanks for your whole list of information that you always come with. And, of course, Bob, thanks for your research and list. <laughs> for Mr. McCaw Mr. McCoth, um, is it McCarthy? Yeah. What are, through the mayor to town manager, what are we doing about the, the property pins? So if they are being removed, off when we're tearing apart the front, are we putting them back? So if we can find out about that, I mean, otherwise, does when residents have to pay for a survey and pay for a marking to be put back or so if we can just address that. The what? I never even noticed mine. 
to add uh, with the first reader of Saturday night on the 24th, well, during the day, we have our Heritage Fair to celebrate Enfield's diverse culture. So it's 11.30 to 4 p.m. at JFK. So you can start your Saturday there. You get done in enough time to go over and support our amazing first readers, which every single child in Enfield has gone through it and benefits from it. it it's truly amazing. They have a great ceremony they have. They get a medal when they read their first book. You know, and they all dress up for the big ceremony. I mean, and it is, like you're saying, it's one fundraiser to fund this. So it, it is a child. I got a couple tables, so we'll end up seeing, you know, uh, who takes the, uh, the winning. I got Bob with me, and he's kind of a trivia guy. <laughs> I just go to support. You know, I don't get the answers ever right. But it is fun, anyways, to hang out and have a good time for a great cause. The Barnard School... Um, I understand we're having an air quality test, I believe, tomorrow is what it was scheduled for Wednesday. Could be wrong, so if you could address that. But also, as Gina mentioned, are we doing, does the air quality test also add an allergen test? I don't know if we're aware, well, uh, I'm sure leadership is aware that we had a teacher removed from a classroom due to it. She steps back in, her doctor's put in right, and she can die. So imagine if that's your wife or your mother or your sister that this is happening to. So I'm hoping when we're testing the air quality, we're doing an allergen to see if it is mold in there. And also you have other teachers in this school getting sick. We have kids four, five, and six years old. Now I have five parents that have reached out that their eyes are, you know, swelling, which I did through leadership. Sent a picture of one, the parent gave me permission to show this child's eye. They are having massive headaches. Now, they've been in preschools prior, so it's not that they're brand new to school environment. So something's going on that they're now bringing their children to the doctor and starting to medicate their children. And if it is, not saying it is, but if it is something wrong in our classrooms, we need to address it immediately. And then, so I brought this up two weeks ago, and what baffles me, because then I started doing my own research. So we, we have a teacher that was prior in one of these classrooms from the room that the teacher has been now removed from. So a teacher that was there prior, her voice has an issue. She has a voice box. You have another teacher that couldn't be in there because she has an allergic reaction to mold. So doing research, talking to people, five rounds of steroids just this year alone that teacher needed. To me, it's unacceptable. If it was your child in this school, you wouldn't be happy and something would be getting done. I saw it in other schools Things are being done because they're related to somebody. doesn't matter who you're related to. We all live here. And as much as I agree we need a great middle school, but I'll tell you, I'm never going to support a referendum for a brand-new middle school if our other schools are not safe for these kids and our staff and teachers to be in them. So once we can confirm that all our schools are, are healthy for our kids to breathe, for our teachers aren't getting sick and our staff's not, I'll support a brand-new middle school any given day. But we don't need a brand new high school and a brand new middle school, and we have our citizens in our town getting sick. So I'm hoping that really gets addressed quick, because um, I believe that's been a few weeks now, and that's, to me, unacceptable. I also would like to bring up the Warman Center. So Enfield Safe Harbor Warman Center. So volunteers run that. Actually, they did great training. So myself, Constable Eileen, is a volunteer, and we do the 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the uh, shift. So it's for our homeless to go in and keep warm. I highly recommend everybody to get trained. The training's an hour and a half. It's run by volunteers, and when you get there, they're, they're just about at max capacity, believe it or not. That's how many homeless we have in Enfield. And it's a warming center because we don't have a homeless shelter. But to my surprise, being there through the night, and what amazing people, and you hear about their life, and, you know, they're pleasant, they're great, they're like you and I, you know, something unfortunate happen, which let's remember can happen to any of us any given day. So I don't think we should have a blind eye because somebody is homeless and all we're not, because tomorrow any one of us can be, and we should want a system built to help everybody and also help us if it happens. But there's been a request, I guess, to have social services there. So my understanding, they have not shown up. So through the mayor to the town manager, can we please, if they come in early and then leave early in the day, because they're gone 7 o'clock because it's a warming center, they have to be out, that we have social services there one of these mornings to talk to it. If we have this many people there, this is where we need to go and help them. That's the point of having social services. 
and uh, it's a one-stop shop. So my bit is let's bring them to the people that truly needs it. They don't have cars. So if we can do that, that'd be great. And for JFK Gemma, thank you. Very proud of you coming to speak. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and through the mayor, to the town manager, can we look at JFK about the, the gas smell and Blue House about mold coming out of the bathroom wall to make sure our kids are safe in that building too. It seems like maybe we should do air quality and allergen test in every one of our schools since uh, we seem to have more issues with that. I think I covered everything. One other thing I do want, I, I believe it was supposed to be emailed to everybody, but I'm gonna read for the record an email from Judy Kilty. She asked to be, let me see, to be read. If I could, uh, should have printed it. Liz, I'd appreciate if you would read during council communications your next meeting, thank you. So we'll end on a positive. On Friday, February 9th, I had a TIA and my husband called 911. The person answering was calm and reassuring and gave my husband instructions to check my level of impairment. Within what seemed like a few minutes, a fire truck from Hazardville Fire Department, along with an ambulance with EMTs, arrived and took immediate control of the situation. They put me immediately at ease and presented themselves as knowledgeable, professional, and compassionate. They transported me to St. Francis Hospital. I would like to acknowledge our deep appreciation for the fire department and EMTs. I lived in Enfield for 60 years, and as much as people complain about virtually everything in this town, I would like to make it known that we have unmatched professional emergency personnel. I do not remember their names, but I'd really appreciate it if you can share this with them. I will also be sharing this with the town council. Thank you again, Judy Kilty, 83 Abbey Road, Enfield, Connecticut. That's all I have, thank you. Thank and you. Judy's doing good. I just wanna add that too, she is doing good. So. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay, I just have a few comments and I guess Three years ago, we had a referendum, which was $41 million, and it would have fixed all the roofs in five years, and it would have done the work on the boilers. Maybe we didn't educate, maybe we did educate, but the answer was no. And unfortunately, we can have the best plans in the world, but if people say no, we can't move forward with them. We have a faction that I believe when they vote no, believe that the problem does not exist. The problem does exist. We need information to come to us so that we can have a plan, move forward with a plan, change a plan as needed. But everything that we do up here requires that a referendum be passed. I don't think any people sitting up here come lightly with any referendum they bring before you. So I'm hoping that once the facilities can get its organization moving in a fashion that we can come forward again with another referendum. It appears that JFK is the first, but we are looking at how to do roofs and boilers and other things through either um, smaller referendums or linking them with roads. We have a lot of infrastructure in this town. And I will say one thing, I personally take offense when people talk down about Enfield. I think that this is a town with a lot of positive things. We are working really hard to establish areas where we can help with development and try to move this town forward. And for me, mill rate and average household is the, the burden per household on the average. So when you're set up there and you give me mill rates, please give me the average cost of a home in that. And also I would like to know the services that are provided. 
And on that note, I would like to suspend the rules and move items E, F, G, H, J, K, and L to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor Falk. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing going to all those in favor? Those opposed? Any abstentions? We have 11 in favor, zero against. Councilor Sakala? All right, so I wasn't going to speak, but I just have a couple of comments, and I want to pay, piggyback on um, what um, Donna said. You know, the goal is to fix the schools, fix the buildings. Bob. Sorry, Gina. Bob. Bye, Gina. So the goal is to um, fix our town buildings, fix our schools, fix our roads, fix the boilers, fix the roofs, everything. Um, so the plan didn't work. The plan for the JFK referendum didn't work. The plan for the referendums prior to that didn't work. So guess what? We're going to change the plan, not the goal, okay? And that's what we're trying to do. Um, I will say that when people complain that they don't want taxes to go up um, and they don't want, um, they, they want services to remain high and we need to do something. Well, I don't know a heck of a lot about the TIF, but we were just told about it and that sounds like a pretty good out of the box solution to not raising taxes and doing something that will get businesses here and attract businesses so our tax base goes up and our taxes do not. So those are some of my responses to some of the comments tonight. It's um, a little difficult to listen to people when uh, sometimes when they come and say that we're not doing things that we should be when that's exactly what we're trying to do is um, not raise your taxes and get businesses here and improve our schools and um, fix infrastructure. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Declare uh, council communications closed. Item number nine, town manager report and communications. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, um, wanted to point out that included in the <coughs> packet is the project and activities report, the PAR. Uh, more than happy to address any questions or concerns with respect to any of the information included in the PAR. Uh, I did want to note and call out, um, I thought it prudent uh, to note that uh, as was highlighted at the last school board meeting, uh, the town did receive a $313,000 reimbursable grant for uh, security measures, um, additional security measures within the schools, uh, and that our emergency operations plan um, is on a regularly scheduled update, and that update uh, will be completed um, uh, well, tomorrow, actually, uh, based on uh, on the information that is available. So uh, I did want to touch on uh, on those two things. I thought they were very timely. Uh, beyond that, uh, more than happy to answer any questions and concerns that uh, you or council may have uh, with respect to the PAR or any other item. Council Crisati. Could you, uh, through the manager, uh, to the manager, could you give us an update on uh, what's going on with the Santa Delbert School in the, in the 20 apartments. Uh, just give us an update on that, please. Um, I, I have to confess, Councilor, I'm not highly familiar with that project. That is one that has uh, been under the auspices of uh, Mr. Cirillo and his department. Uh, I can tell you that it is the conversion of the school, uh, the old Santa Delbert School, to I believe it is 20 market rate uh, apartments uh, that uh, are um, targeted for uh, I believe it is veterans based on uh, the application uh, that we originally saw, but uh, Mike and his team would be um, the more qualified individuals to provide specifics, and I'll be more than happy to have them follow up. Okay. Sure. My, my concern was I just noticed that, uh, that they needed additional parking for the facility. Uh, they are working on um, a plan to address the parking needs there. They have been in uh, communication with the adjoining um, the adjoining property owner, which is the strip mall there on the front side of, uh, of uh, five, and they have had communications with the town as well about potential ways to have access um, uh, to increase that parking to both sides of, of uh, the okay. lot there. Thank so they you. are working through that. Thank you. Sure. No further questions. Um, move on to item 10, town attorney report. No, okay. no. Any questions for the town attorney? Okay. Uh, item 11, report of special committees of the council. Councilor Falk. 
The uh, Development Services Subcommittee had a meeting a couple weeks ago, and we got a, um, a detailed report from uh, Mike Cirillo on a number of various issues. Um, one was the TIF, so um, uh, the people that were there got to see that, and he got reinforced again tonight. Uh, they talked about the uh, zoning changes uh, for different areas of town, like the mall, uh, allowing uh, apartments and businesses in the same uh, complex. Um, and also for the zoning around the, the uh, train station or proposed train station. Uh, he talked about the, um, the bridge um, repairs under the, the railroad tracks going to the boat launch and the bike path along the river and what have you. And as part of that, he showed us like a, a, a concept, a master plan type concept, all the way up Freshwater Brook, all the way up to where it crosses Elm Street, uh, like putting in a, a bike path. And the logic was that it, it, it goes behind us, Nuntuck. And if you had people in, say, Thompsonville, with no car, they could ride their bike up the bike path and, and, and go to school. He, he was kind of focusing his, his efforts on the fact that uh, if you create a mode of transportation, such as the train, then development will occur around it to support that. Uh, so again, apartments or multifamily dwellings in the area around the train station, businesses, shops, whatever, would all be supported by the fact that the trains were there. Same thing with the bikes and cars. Uh, so he, he went on and, and uh, uh, things are moving forward and uh, we're going good. Can't do everything, but we're, we're doing as much as we can. Any questions for Councilors Falk? Any other reports of special committees of the council? Council Crisati. Yeah, I'd just like to make a quick little update on the Commission on Aging. Um, the senior home repair uh, repairs will begin on April 3rd. Um, if anybody uh, needs work to be done, uh, contact through the Department of Social Services. Uh, you have up till uh, March 19th. Uh, on the 27th, there's a focus group. Um, there'll be a taping on senior views making seniors laugh for their health, which should be pretty pretty informative. Also on February 26th, uh, there'll be a focus group for isolated seniors, which is another uh, important topic to be dealt with. Uh, one thing that, that was stated uh, in, in the meeting, at the Senior Center, uh, now the Senior Center has been open for many, many years. Uh, they have not, never had a fire drill uh, there. And so I think that would be a, a good idea for them to, to practice fire drills, uh, procedures over there for the staff, and also a possibility of uh, lockdown procedures in, in various buildings uh, in the event that, uh, that anybody needed uh, a lockdown situation that uh, they should be schooled on it. Uh, and I think the, the, another thing I'm just gonna mention too uh, and talk about fire drills, you know, I think everybody should be checking their, uh, their, their fire alarms at home. Uh, we've had a few uh, fires here in town, um, you know, and we've had some fatalities, and that's another thing that, uh, that people should be checking also. Um, but I think that the practice of fire drills and preparing staff you know, of how to get people out of buildings and lockdown procedures should be, uh, should be, uh, that was a topic that was brought up in our meeting. All right, so uh, if you could just address that. And then the other thing that I'm gonna mention that on June 12th, uh, the symposium uh, from people from the state and people from uh, social services are gonna be putting on a um, symposium uh, that is gonna be dealing with the topic of elder abuse will be a three-person panel, and they want uh, people from uh, our town council uh, to be in attendance, and that's on June 12th. So I just wanted to give a little quick update on that. Thank so. you. Okay. Councilor Demi. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. Just a note on fire alarms. Daylight saving time. Every year you change your clocks. Uh, they recommend the fire departments change the batteries all the time check them, make sure they work, just change batteries. Uh, most fire departments uh, in Enfield uh, will give you free batteries if you uh, show up. And if you have a problem, 
Uh, if you see your fire districts, they'll uh, they'll actually and still have and will install a uh, fire uh, alarm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, moving on. Item 12, old business. On page one, appointments A1 to one, two, or three. I believe we have none. On page two, items four through 17. Item 17, Zoning Board of Appeal, alternate term of office of Virginia Higley expired. Reappointment would be till, ooh, doo -doo -doo, that, that number can't be right, 12 30, 31, 2017, assuming that's 2018. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the uh, appointment date is on term. that, but we, okay. so yes. Item oh, 17, Zoning Board of Appeals, alternate, I have a nominee. You said I'd like to nominate uh, Kelly Davis. We have a nominee by Councilor oh, Arnone. Is that, I'm sorry, no, no. My battery is dead, so excuse me, I'm on my phone. Me. It's, uh, no, I've got it on my phone. But go ahead. So, so it's Martha McCoy. So let's, let's withdraw that nomination. Yeah, can I withdraw that nomination, nomination. please? I'm just confused. Okay, now go ahead. Yep. Martha McLeod. Martha McLeod. 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 Is a couple McLeod. McLeod. I second that. It's not, it's not easy on a phone. Uh, it really is. Motion to close nomination. Yes, please. All right. So I have a motion for Martha McLeod. Nominations to be closed. Any discuss? All those in favor, raise your hands. All those opposed. Eleven in favor, zero against. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzette. Martha McLeod. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Anoni. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Martha McLeod. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Martha McLeod. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. So on page three, item 18, Zoning Board of Appeals, vacancy exists. Uh, replacement would be till 12 31 2019. Do I have a nominee? Councillor Knox. Yeah, that would be Kelly Davis. Kelly Davis. Second. Second by Councillor Sakala. Motion, Motion to close by Councillor Deputy Mayor Suzak. Seconded by Councillor Falk. All those in favor of closing nominations? Show of hands, 11 in favor, zero against. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Kelly Davis. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Kelly Davis. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Kelly Davis. 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item B, which is town manager appointments. Do we have any appointments, sir? No, sir, not at this time. So item B, 1 through 12, no appointments. C, discussion resolution on Enfield High. Assume that stays on the table. The committee, yes. D, resolution on Macy's. Assuming that stays on the table. Okay. We move to new business, item 13. Since there really is no new business, we will move to item 14, item discussion. Item A, consent agenda. Items one, two, three, and four, basically our transfer of funds for grant applications. And then the fourth is a authorization to apply for a grant. Close to approve. By Councillor Falk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Any discussion on the consent agenda? So Suzanne, we can all four at once, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, hearing none, roll call please. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Under items for discussion, B appointments. These are just um, notice of vacancies for the Beautification Committee, Culture Arts, and Culture Arts. So no action needs to be taken. C and D, no appointments. Item E, okay. discuss and resolution of transfer of funds, Department of Public Works, 33,000. I'm sorry, let me just get the resolution. Page 57. 37. 57. All right, here we go. Uh. Yeah. No. No, too far. no. I'll get it, folks. I apologize. <laughs> I still do everything by paper. 
At least your batteries won't die. <laughs> My battery won't die. No batteries. You can't find the page. It's right? not on here. All right. Uh, resolution item E, request for transfer of funds, Department of Public Works, 33000 be it resolved that in accordance of Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Two, CIP tipper barrels, other supply materials, 31008825-561900-33000 from CIP revenue tipper barrel sales dash tipper barrels 31042011-417022 of $33,000 certified that the funds are available on February 7th by John Wilcox. Motion to approve. By okay. Councillor Second. Falk. Seconded by Councillor Known. Any discussion on the motion? How many barrels is this by? Um, I don't, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Mike, do you know? Slazic, off the top of your head, do you know how many total barrels? We had sent, um, I know that we had provided an email. There was a qu request that came out of um, leadership for what was being purchased, and there was a breakdown um, in that email. So I will find that again and, and send that. But uh, right. um, Thank you. Sure. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Fall? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Councillor Arnone? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Crisotti? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item F, discussion resolution, a resolution authorizing Department of Public Works, Public Works to utilize funds for tipper barrel purchases. Where is the Enfield Town Council has established a revenue account 31042011-417022 for receipts of tipper barrel sales. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Enfield Town Council specifies that any receipts from tipper barrel sales received by Public Works will be committed to the purchase of tipper barrels and may be paid from account 31008825-5619000. Prepared by the Town and Manager's Office on February 14, 2018. Motion by Councilor Crisotti. Second. Second by Councilor Arnone. Any discussion on the resolution? Brian. Uh, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Councilor Falk's question uh, with request to the recycle bins, there are 273 being ordered. Uh, with re respect to the blue recycle containers, there's 156 being ordered. And then uh, on the matter of the gray trash containers themselves, 273 and a collection of assorted lids. Thank you. Hear no other further discussion. Roll call, please. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item G, discussion resolution, request to reduce FY18 budget to account for municipal funding re reductions in the state budget. Whereas the Enfield Town Council approved the town budget for the fiscal year on July 1, 2017 through June 30th, 2018, based on the estimated state appropriation to the town, and whereas the state's appropriation was less than the amount estimated, and whereas the town budget must be adjusted accordingly, therefore be it resolved the, Enfield, the town of Enfield budget for fiscal year for, for the fiscal year of July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018, is hereby revised in accordance with attachment A. So moved. By Councillor Falk, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Discussion on a motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Falk? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Councillor Ononi? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Crisotti? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. Councillor Denny? Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item H under miscellaneous discussion resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into an agreement with New Vision Systems Corporation. 
where resolve that Brian R. H. Chadkowski, town manager, is empowered to execute and deliver in the name and on behalf of this municipality an agreement with New Vision Systems Corporation subject to the review of the town attorney, prepared by Suzanne Olnicki, town clerk, date February 5th, 2018. So moved. By Councilor Second. Falk, seconded by Councilor Anone. Any discussion on the motion? Councilor Falk. Could you just give us some definition as to what's actually being done here? Well, we're extending the software maintenance agreement for uh, the next seven years, starting next August of 2019. <coughs> That'll give us a fixed fee for our software maintenance agreement with this company. This is for our land records and the other documents, records that we keep in the town clerk's office. It will also add to our system electronic recording. We hope to get that up and running soon. And this is only just another method, another additional method to record documents. We'll be doing it electronically as well as with paper and through the mail and all the ways we do it now. But it'll be one more facet that we'll be able to offer to. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay. No further discussion. Roll call, please. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnani? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Councillor Crisati? Four. Councillor Davis? Four. And Councillor Denny? Four. Sorry. Okay. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. So item I, uh, discussion, the adoption of the Town of Enfield Emergency Contingent Plan for Elections. We'd like to leave this on the table till next meeting so everyone can have a couple weeks to review it and bring back any questions. That's okay with folks. Okay, item J. So Suzanne, we need do nothing but just leave it on the table. That's yep. correct. Okay, item J. Discussion resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a grant application to the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a grant application to be submitted to the Connecticut Department of Transportation for fiscal year 2018 and 2019, whereas the Connecticut Department of Transportation, DOT, provides grants to the Department of Social Services, and whereas the Department of Social Services is in the process of submitting a grant application to the DOT for funds that will be available for the town in a fiscal year 2018 through 2019, Resolve that the town manager, Brian R. H. Chadkowski, is authorized to sign and submit the grant application in name on behalf of the town of Enfield with the DOT and fix the corporate seal, submitted February 9, 2018, by Don Homer Boothier, Director of Social Services. So moved. By Councilor Falk. Second. Second by Councilor <clears throat> Denny. Any discussion on the resolution? I uh, just wonder if the Go manager yep. could give us some definition as to what's included in here. What are we buying? So in this particular instance, these would be the next generation of the dial a ride buses. So this is just uh, um, ongoing or reoccurring legislation that you see every few years as we cycle through uh, the current buses. And so this is uh, what this particular legislation for. This would be 80 percent uh, revenue from the Department of Transportation to cover the acquisition of those buses. And it doesn't include the. Uh Magic carpet buses is just dial a ride. No, these are just dial a ride. That is correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnani. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item K, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a various agreements with e-recording agents. Resolution, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign various agreements with e-recording agents for electronic recording in the town clerk's office. Whereas the town's clerk office is planning to accept e-recordings in addition to land record documents hand carried and delivered by mail to the office. And whereas there are four major delivery agents offering these <coughs> services, and whereas there are certain agent agreements that must be signed to allow for the submission of these documents to our land record vendor, and whereas the agreements have been reviewed by the town attorney, and all recommend recommendations have been incorporated into the, into the documents. Resolve that town manager Brian H. Chetkowski is empowered to sign the following agreements as submitted and revised by the delivery agents. Sim Simpla, Simpla File LLC, E-Recording Partners Network, Network LLC, Corporation Services Company, CSC, 
In Indicom Holdings, Inc., prepared by Suzanne Olnicki, Town Clerk, on February 5th, 2018. By Councillor Denny, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Councillor Falk. Uh, are these new programs, or is this just a continuation of existing programs? Well, this goes hand-in-hand -hand with adding electronic recording to our land record system. These companies are will be doing the submitting on behalf of the people who are drawing up the paperwork, the attorneys, the mortgages, things like that, through our gatekeepers, so to speak, the New Vision software. But the, it's these companies that we need to sign the agreements with in order to be able to accept the electronic recordings. Oh, yes. We, we don't even have it in place yet. It goes, uh, it, it's goes hand in hand with that agreement that you just approved, allowing the town manager to extend the software maintenance, but also we'll add that electronic module as well. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, roll call, please. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item 11, discussion resolution, resolution to approve a seven-year police chief contract. Resolve that the Enfield Town Council does hereby approve the seven-year contract between the town of Enfield and Alaric J. Fox, commencing on March 12, 2018, prepared on February 13, 2018, by Steve Belinda. So moved. By Councillor Falk. Second. Seconded by Councillor Anoni. Any discussion? Hearing on roll call, please. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Susan. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. There's 11 in favor and against. No abstentions. Item 16, public communication. Does anyone like to speak before the council? Jack. Uh, there's a few things that didn't get addressed. Uh, Jack, you, Jack, sorry, name and address. Sorry, yep. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. I haven't moved. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure. <laughs> um, I didn't hear anything. I, I hope somebody gets back to me about a maintenance program with boilers and who checks the MSDS sheets and the, the coal patching that they did in my neighborhood after the rain and weather we got, it's like they never did it. Um, and nobody spoke about the truck wash and whether that's still in the works. Um, and also, uh, <clears throat> the acceptable numbers of surrounding states for the emissions on the uh, JFK thing uh, is within spec in the surrounding states. So I wondered why ours are like that and if anybody's challenged that. Um, and then the other thing is we talk about referendums getting rejected. We accepted a whole bunch of referendums, high dollar, $60 million for roads, uh, the high school for $130 million, Honeywell, I don't even remember what that was. Uh, uh, and why they get voted down? Because people see fat. In the, in the project. They see it, and they're not stupid. So naturally, they're going to vote it down until you hone it down and have it at some reasonable number. It's, it's not that the people in this town want to see these things degrade and, and schools crumble around our ears. We don't want that. We, we want the kids' health and teachers to, to be healthy in these schools. So it's not a matter of that. You know, it's like when we talked about the roofs and, and what causes a lot of these problems is flat roofs leaking. How many of you people own a house with a flat roof? Nobody. But we got them in town. I advocated the last time we had the roof thing, put pitched roofs on. We're talking about spending some money here. It's going to, they'll last longer. We're always talking about storage and building other buildings. Well, if you had attics on these, on these, maybe you'd have a storage. I don't know, but it's just a thought. 
But I would, I would support something like that because it makes sense. Because it's all the time that we're doing roofs. Peter, you talked about it last time. If we, if we did all the roofs at once, we'd just be having to do all the roofs at, all the time. Every, what, 10 years they last, a flat roof, maybe? Uh, and maybe it's 20. God, find me wrong on that. Jeez, yeah, please. What I'm talking about is common sense and, and not trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. Six million dollars for furniture, no wonder people voted it down. It's ridiculous. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were getting up. You still have, uh, you still still have two I minutes. Too. I you just still, wanted to make sure. Go right ahead. Um, my bad. You can always speak for the second time, Jack. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all set. I've talked enough tonight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gina. Gina Sullivan, 11 Spear Avenue. Um, I'm just following up on my uh, first comments about the air quality issues. Thank you, Councillor Davis, for um, um, acknowledging my, um, my comments. Um, I believe that she asked the town manager um, <laughs> if... Um, Did a good job. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I believe she asked the town manager to uh, a question about it, and um, there was also an issue brought up about tipper barrels. Now he addressed the tipper barrel issue. Could he please address the air quality issue at Barnard? Because I think that's a lot more serious than tipper barrels. Not that tipper barrels aren't important. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Bob T. Katz, Woodgate Circle. Let's talk about mold. Mold is death. You don't know what strain of mold is in this school. People can die. If you ever watch forensic <coughs> files, some people have been accused of murder, and the, and the, the wife died because of the mold. The children died because of the mold. It's very serious, and I don't think it, many people take it very serious here in Enfield. It's got to be done. You have to check the strain of mold. You have to check the air quality in all the schools. These are public buildings. You, you have to have the safety of the, of the buildings. Now, let me talk about that referendum that did pass about the boilers. There, there was 11 schools. Ten of them were approved to change the boilers. I don't know what's been done on this, pro, on this program. They were going to change all the controls. Somebody took out the JFK boilers. They wanted to take that out of there because we're going to go to referendum. You gambled and you lost. The Central Library, you gambled and you lost. It failed in the early spring, and they knew. Public Works knew it was failing for five years. They were only running on half the system. The system was struggling during the summer, so it quit. I don't know why, why they had, had to take it out of there. The only one that was going to be changed, the boilers, was Stowe, but they were going to change the controls. So that project should have been completed by now. If it hasn't been, I don't, I don't know what's going on with, with, with this program. So, somebody's got a lot of fire under their butt. As far as cities growing, Danbury's growing at a rapid rate. They bring industry in. The first thing you got to do is bring industry in. Then the people will move in. Then, then the mill rate, you'll be able to lower the mill rate because the value of homes go up. There's a demand. We're not doing that. Shelton, the highest taxpayer is an individual, Robert Sinko. His property is worth $215 million. He's the, high, he's the highest in the grand list. You got uh, a, a communities, $44 million. That's even bigger than, than our highest. So we got to get some bigger companies in here. Middletown's got Pratt Whitney, which is, exceeds Aetna, exceeds Mass Mutual. 
We have to do that. I mean, you know, the other thing I want to talk about, let's talk about drugs. Lori and Peter, I'm, gl I'm glad you went on that thing, but there is some misinformation. I've never drank alcohol. I never did drugs. I didn't smoke. Smoking is addictive. That kills 50,000 people a year. Automobile accidents kill 40,000. Opiates is up there, but it's below accident rate. Pillows kill people. Suffocation. Let's talk about marijuana. Google marijuana and ask how many people have been killed in the last 7,000 years. Google's been searching since 2012. You know what the number is? Zero. Nobody's been killed by marijuana. They can't predict the high on the marijuana. I was over in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War. Everybody exaggerates what marijuana did. But marijuana is a very safe, it's a cure. You ask many of the witch doctors, I went to the Philippines, I talked to some of the natives down there in the jungles. Marijuana is a cure, and it has to be researched. How that happened, legislation was put in to make heroin, cocaine, a class one drug. The cigarette companies put the put marijuana in as a class one drug. It's not a class one drug. If anything is a class one drug, it's tobacco. So Google it, find out how many have been killed. It's very safe and it's a cure for many diseases. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? For the second time? Declare public communications closed. And item nine uh, item 17, Councilor Communications. Councilor Bosco. Bob, um, yeah, when you're talking money like that and getting people in, of course they have a lower mill rate. I mean, we, you know, our probably medium house is 130000 and we don't even have a lot of industry with that type of tax bill. But, and, and I also do sometimes get a little, um, I take town of Enfield a little personal. So I, 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 too, when I hear it getting bashed, I, I, I take it more personal than I should. The, the one big problem Enfield has is availability of land. With the federal wetlands regulation that came in, we don't have the land that Windsor has. We don't have the land that a lot of the other towns have because we were granted this beautiful abundance of wetlands. So we are very limited on what we can expand and how much we can expand on the industrial side. Uh, I will say this much, the town is actively pursuing any option it can to get new people in here. I mean, planning and zoning is actually doing pretty good. We really have had a good run on getting new people here. And it's not because we're sitting on our hands. We, we are actively pursuing it, but we only have a limited available amount of land and we're, we're, we're stuck with what we got to do. And no matter how many times we go with, with these buildings, you know, everyone would love to do everything. But uh, again, when we send it out to referendum, our hands tied by charter at a certain amount, you can't do much with that. Um, Jack, pitch roofs, I agree with you 100%. And I asked a question about that, and I never thought about the cost and where we're going to put the mechanicals that are hidden on a roof. Because I, 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 matter of fact, I said the same thing to Don. I said, I think we should be putting pitch roofs. I'd rather spend more money and put a pitch roof. And then, you know, every 20 years, we can just shingle what we need and we're all set. But I never in a million years thought about the mechanicals. What are we going to do with them? So, if we put the pitch roof, we're going to have to move the mechanicals on the ground, which means every building we do where we have mechanicals, we're going to have to change all that stuff out. Um, car wash is going along. And um, another thing with, like, Bob, Bob, I've never seen something move slower than, uh, than government. I mean, it is terrible. The, the private sector... Get what will get done in one month takes ten years. If 
fire somebody who's not it, doing their it's, job. It's, it's terrible. Well, you have to do a lot of, and again, I can't get back and forth to you, but there's a lot of things and steps we have to follow through before we can do something. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say. Deputy Mayor Suzak. The roofs that are on the school are pitched. They're just not gable roofs. And I guess that that's what, you know, Joey and I had a long discussion about why we don't have gable roofs. And we can put the mechanicals in under the gable roofs, but it is a little bit of an added expense. Then you also have a gutter system all along the outside, so your water's going to dump off onto your sidewalks all over. So you have a different type of water capture system. But I will tell you, it's sitting on facilities. We're going to look at all the roofs. And we will look at the cost estimates as to keeping a conventional commercial pitched roof that everybody calls a flat roof that does have a pitch and going to a gable roofing system. And we'll see, you know, what the positives and what the negatives are to doing something like that. It's not that they don't do them on schools. They do do them on schools. But... You have to remember that you've got to get a specific pitch to do, be able to do anything with it. And those are pretty wide buildings. So, I, you know, that's another thing that well, we'll have to look at. The only school that I know that has the mechanicals inside under a gable roof framing system is the Head Start. Even the um, senior center, that has a um, mechanical well. So there's a, a flat roofing system, as, as it's known around here, that holds the mechanicals. And you have the um, mansard systems that look like a pitched roof that's a gable roof. So we will look at that. Because I think everybody needs to know what kind of costs we're talking about. And um, other than that, let's try to be a little positive about Enfield. Kind of gets under our skin up here when we have a lot of negative on Enfield. Thank you. We'll end on a positive. Um, the girls' basketball team will be in the champ conference championship on Thursday night, and the boys' team is, I think, the number one seed going into their conference tournament. So, you know, maybe, uh, again, our kids are leading the way. Absolutely. Yep. Cheers. Are you all excited? We'll go. Yeah. I just wanted to mention the, the website, if anybody was interested in getting one of these bottles, if you could pass it this way, and maybe the audience would like to look at it as well. It's saferlockrx.com. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Davis. From the mayor to the town manager, can you answer some of the questions that I asked about Barnard School, please? Sure. To the um, extent that I have information available, um, there was a, a there was a complaint called in to the health department uh, with respect to Barnard. Uh, the health department did send a sanitarian over on Friday, February second. Uh, quote from the director: There was uh, not any obvious visible mold during the visit. Um, then they recommended some maintenance measures with respect to changing out the wet ceiling tire tiles faster um, going forward. Then um, shortly thereafter, there was a reference to um, this issue, and I think it was uh, your comments, yes, the following um, council meeting, which was, I think it was the fifth maybe, uh, yes. Uh, then the Deputy Director of Public Works reached out to Best Tech uh, on or about the 5th of February. Uh, they were at the school, Barner, the following week uh, with respect to establishing uh, scope and parameters for the mold testing, uh, the air quality testing at that facility. I do not know whether or not that, that test is intended to include allergens. Uh, but I do know that it will include mold. I don't know the specific date as to when they are planning to make that test uh, or to uh, take uh, the samples, but I can find out tomorrow in the staff meeting and follow up. So we are working through to get resolution to the questions and concerns that were asked previously. So we are working through that. Sure. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Councilor Falk. Second. So by Councilor Known, all those in favor? Against, 11 in favor, zero against, meeting's over.